And now it's time for a Q&A from you, the viewers. And our first question came in from Commodore 256, who's curious about the new T security chips that are in every Mac. And he feels like this will probably kill off the Hackintosh. And I agree with that. So as you all know, uh, Macs are running with Intel processors, the same ones that we have in all of our Windows machines that are out there. As you'll hear in a few minutes, I switched to Mac after they switched to Intel. And I'll give you my reasons for that uh, when we get a little later into the Q&A segment here. Uh, but as a result, if you built the right machine with the right components, you could largely uh, get OS X to work just like it does on a Mac, but on a much less expensive machine. And what Apple has started doing, probably in response to that, but also because I think of security issues, uh, is that they've begun developing their own means of controlling the system's functions with their own silicon. So Apple on the uh, Mac side is not yet making the processors that go into the computers. They do on the iPad and iPhone. Uh, but they're now taking some of the technology that is in use on those devices that they control the whole stack for and moving it over to the Mac. So my MacBook Pro here has the fingerprint sensor. It had the first version of that T-chip that managed mostly the fingerprint uh, reading and whatnot. Uh, but the new chip here called the T2 uh, that is in the Mac Mini that we'll be reviewing later this week and the new MacBook Air is a significantly different type of chip that does a lot more. I got an article here up on screen from Apple Insider that can give you more detail, uh, but here are some of the things that it handles. It's a system management controller, so it controls a lot of what goes on within the computer. It still controls Touch ID. It still has the secure enclave where it stores your fingerprints and whatnot. Uh, some people don't realize this, but the uh, Mac, and I think Windows to some degree also, does not transmit your fingerprint data back to Apple. It stays within the uh, storage of the computer and the secure enclave is where that stuff is secured. That's why when you get a new computer, a new iPhone or a new Mac, you have to redo your fingerprint or your face ID uh, because it doesn't uh, sync that data up with the cloud. So it handles that. Uh, it also though handles the microphone and the camera and it does this for security, but it's also doing processing to improve the uh, performance and the quality of the images and audio coming through. And apparently the T2 chip is doing a much better job with both. And you can see some examples of that uh, in that Apple Insider article. Uh, but what they've also added now for the MacBook Air uh, is that when you close the lid, there is a hardware disconnect uh, in that chip that turns the microphone off physically. It actually disconnects the electrical uh, connection to make that happen. Uh, so you've got a a very secure way of securing your microphone when the computer's asleep. Uh, close the lid, the microphone is off. That's a feature that they just added to T2. Uh, does that image and audio processing, as I mentioned. It works as a solid state controller, and that includes encryption. Uh, so my understanding here is that the T2 will encrypt the solid state storage, even if you don't specifically enable that in OS X. Uh, the trade-off, though, is that your solid state storage uh, is soldered onto the main board. That's the case with the uh, Mac Mini I just picked up, and I believe with the MacBook Air as well. You can't upgrade the storage because it's tightly integrated into that T2 chip. Uh, so whether or not that's a benefit is up to you, uh, but that is how it works. So it does uh, enable encryption right out of the gate there. It also has secure boot, uh, which prevents non-Apple OSs from loading, but you can turn that off. Uh, they do have a carve-out for Windows if you're using Boot Camp. Uh, but my method of booting off an external drive with Windows to go may not work under that scenario. So you might have to disable the uh, secure boot completely for that to work. And apparently when you disable secure boot, you lose the fingerprint sensor as a result because they can't uh, guarantee the security of the operating system after you disable that. So that's a trade-off there as well. Uh, and also interesting is that it's got HEVC video transcoding built into that processor. And as HEVC becomes more and more important for video production, I suspect that this might actually be something that speeds up the process of editing video and exporting video as well. Uh, they haven't touched on a lot of detail on this. It was kind of mentioned in the uh, presentation when they were doing their product announcement last week or the week before. Uh, so I think that's a pretty big change as well. My prediction here, though, is that we're moving away from Intel on the Mac side. As we saw in my review of the iPad last week, uh, it really is very powerful and nothing really meets that power yet. There's no software that really takes advantage of it. And I think what's happening here is that Apple is trying to get to a point uh, where the T2 chip combined with their ARM processors that they're using on the iPad side, uh, probably in the next year or two, maybe a little bit longer, uh, will result in a little MacBook 
uh, like this one that will be more powerful than some of the Intel chips that you might get in this form factor and fanless because they have really optimized their chips for the specific types of consumer tasks that uh, people typically do. So video watching and editing and uh, photo editing and all those things that are very specific kinds of tasks. These ARM chips are doing exceptionally well on the iPad platform. They've been rivaling desktop processors for a while in those areas. I think it's only a matter of time before we actually see Apple, uh, maybe not for their full Mac product line, but for a portion of it, uh, start moving in that direction. Because I have a MacBook. I bought it back in 2015. It's got the Core M chip in it. It's a little sluggish. It handles video editing, but not great. It doesn't do anything all that spectacularly. And if I could get something that uh, could rival perhaps a mid-range uh, larger Intel laptop and something in this form factor with really good battery life, that would be very appealing to me, especially if I could edit video on the road with a smaller package. Right now when I go out on a field exercise like uh, CES or something, I'm bringing the big 15-inch MacBook with me. I'd much prefer to travel with this, but I just can't edit my video and export it all that quickly on something like this, and that might be uh, what we see in the very near future. And you only have to look over at what Microsoft and Qualcomm are doing, getting Windows 10, the full version of Windows 10, to run on Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. We looked at that Asus NovaGo recently, uh, which is essentially running with a smartphone processor, the same exact chip that's on many uh, flagship phones. They put it inside this laptop. It ran Windows 10. It ran things that were ARM optimized, but it also ran Intel software uh, much better than I expected it to. It wasn't a spectacularly fast laptop, but it had great battery life, and I think this is where Apple is going as well, and I would argue that Apple's chip designers are as talented as Qualcomm's folks, and maybe even more so, because they've done quite a bit in the last year between the iPad 10.5 and the iPad 11. Uh, that processor on the iPad 11 is just way too overpowered for the software library that's available for it, and I think we're very, very close to the point where one of those chips is going to be fast enough to drive OS X. So we'll keep an eye on this. I think in the next year or two, we're going to see a Mac about this size that uh, will put the current MacBook to shame and deliver greater battery life powered by an Apple ARM processor. Let's see if I'm right in a year. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Too Much Sauce, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.